Welcome. This is the Drupal Usability Meeting for May 14th, 2021. I'm Benji Fisher moderating the meeting. And also here are Christina Trumias, who is sharing her screen, Aaron Mikhail, Anmol Dole, Gaurav Malawat, Gavar Khotsi, and Thomas Howell. And we're a diverse group of people involved in Drupal with designers, site builders, front and back end developers, and uh, and I think that diversity of, of points of view is what makes these meetings useful. So Christina, take it away. Okay, so basically this is issue number 359984. And this is to add the new content editor to the standard profile. Um, it's been a while. Uh, we've been discussing this issue for a while. Um, Basically, we are adding our set of um, permissions for the new content editor. And there's a related issue. You can check it here that it's going to add the content manager profile because the proposal was to add to two profiles. Um, the content manager is expected to have more permission marks, more um, advanced permissions. And if in the case there is only one editor in the whole site, this editor can have both roles. So basically, um, I'll try to close the back sharing that we were having here. Uh, the last discussions that we had were around um, this uh, specific point about giving or not giving the content editor more or less uh, permissions about publishing and unpublishing content. But when she came to review the issue, she mentioned that, okay, the editor won't have uh, the publish and unpublish, but uh, right now the, the editor has, uh, the content editor has the delete on content. So it, the content might be published and the editor uh, could actually delete this content. So, um, it's kind of conflicting with the publishing and publishing permissions that we were discussing. And that's the intro. Uh, I think it makes sense that it's, it's kind of um, strange that the editor has these permissions to delete content. And yeah, uh, but it can publish or unpublish. So what do people think about this? I don't wait. I'm I'm confused. Like the editor, like in every site that I've built, the content creator should not have the rights to delete content. Um, that that's generally and that's that's common for Salesforce. It's common for many database SaaS applications out there. Um, you have to have uh, elevated permissions to do permanent deletes of uh, information. So right. that's that's why you don't give delete permissions to the content generator. And in a solo site, um, so if you it's a blog, then you would have both content editing and uh, content. Um, uh, it, it, it requires having the, uh, and I'm saying this all wrong, there's two roles and the manager, the content manager is the one that gets editing permission and the content editor is the one that gets um, uh, is the one that gets the capacity to create their own content. And if it's a blog, then you'd have both roles. You'd be both a, uh, an editor and a manager. And if it's not a blog and it's an actual distributed site, then the person with elevated privileges is the one who has the rights to um, delete content. That's why you separate those roles, but because we've separated talking about these roles separately um, and they're each in their own ticket, it makes it seem as if the content editor does, there's no means by which to delete, but it is the manager who should have deleting. And in small sites, everyone is both a manager and an editor. Agreed. So, sorry, I'm gonna stop now, but that's my, my position. Yeah, Aaron, would, uh... did you wanna say something? 
Yeah, I was testing the raised hand feature in here, which I, I don't know if anybody noticed because I, I to me it didn't look like it popped up with anything on the screen, but um, I don't know if that showed up for you, Benji, that I'd raised my hand at all. But uh, um, yeah, just to say that I think I, I broadly agree with what Thomas is saying. Um, on a small site, you're going to have like, uh, you know, you, you'll, you'll probably have the same people with editors, same people with manager. But then on larger sites, and um, especially, for instance, in or public organizations like universities, they will have like content retention schedules um, for uh, usually for legal purposes, um, where if you create a piece of content, you shouldn't be able to then delete it or you shouldn't be able to then go in and delete um, a page on the site um, and only uh, in some organizations, maybe not even a content manager would 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 do that but I, I think restricting the um, any anything unrecoverable like deleting permanently deleting something should be restricted to um you know some high level permission like content manager regardless of who created it in the first place yeah I, I think if there were more fine-grained permissions if we could give a content creator permission to delete things as long as they're still in draft form and have not yet been published, then uh, then, then we could grant that. But but there is no such permission, so pro probably best not not to give too many permissions. And 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 honestly, like what's missing for me is um, there should be something in between perma delete and um, basically you, you mark it for delete. Um, because you should, as an individual, be able to say, hey, I know all this stuff is garbage. I want this to be reaped. Put this into the queue for deletion. Like, there's no way to, to communicate from the uh, content editor to the content manager that they want something deleted. There's, that's missing from the Drupal permissions uh, set. But I, it's, this isn't that issue. So um, I just think it makes it, it's one of the reasons why it's a little bit weird you want to be able to say hey i don't need any of these things as the content owner i would there's many instances where i'll know i want these things to be deleted but to me that's an advanced workflow and you'd actually have to create that kind of thing through a contrib module for instance yeah in that case you probably would have it using like content moderation you would have a, a final stage like archived or pen or pending deletion stage and then you might have some contrib module that auto deletes stuff after like X number of years. But again, we're talking like, you know, maybe five years of it being in that, just sitting, it sitting in that state. It, it's, it's painful. So there's not a perfect solution, unfortunately. I, I guess we could create a, a content moderation state um, that says, uh, you know, please delete me and, and give the content creator permission to transition to that state. But, but again, that's, that's out of scope for this issue. Absolutely um, agreed. So I, I, I think there's, there's pretty strong consensus here. Yeah, um, we all agree. Yeah. Go ahead with, with suggested change. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess we want to do two things at this point. Um, you know, have, have someone volunteer to make the change and someone volunteer to review it. Um, I, I see also Emily Nouveau has joined us, welcome. And, and the other thing I, I'd like to do, Christina, could you um, scroll through the current permissions and, and see if there are any others that we'd like to discuss? Um, we have... Uh... Let me see. So all the permissions that we have right now about related about deleting things is uh, Could you make revisions. it a little bigger? Yeah. Zoom, zoom in. Does it work? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay. So I think um, it makes sense that you can actually delete uh, revisions or even translator, translations, but I wouldn't I'm not even sure about media, but I wouldn't delete content itself. What, I mean, I'm not 100% sure about that, but yeah, definitely we have to remove these ones, probably media, and what do you think about translations and revisions? 
I don't I have that much say, experience. Um, though, again, uh, my view is that at the end of the day, all of that is still content. And if you're in a, if you're working in a, um, in a small site where there's no governance, then and everybody probably has the content editor and content manager. If you're working in a larger site in an organization where there is an element of governance around content, regardless of whether that's a revision or a translation or the, the original piece of content, and the, the policy that they likely would have in place is that all content is kept for archival reasons, for legal purposes, for X number of reasons, you know, to, to retrieve in the future. So whether that's a version of a content sometime in the past or a translation, I think my view would be that that is still the same that I don't think there should be any delete permissions. Um, because again, delete is an unrecoverable action and that's not really the job of a content editor to make unrecoverable actions, I think. I was going to ask whether deleting revisions gives you permission to delete the current revision. I don't think it does. But on second thought, that's the wrong question to ask. And I think there's a lot of virtue in simplicity here. And the simple thing is just not to give any delete permissions to the content creator role and move all of those permissions to the content manager role, which is a separate issue. Um, I, I think I vote for simplicity here. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Makes sense. Wow, we are actually getting rid of the bike sharing today. Okay. Cool. Does anybody? Um, th there were some more permissions there. I think we, we should look at. Revert all revisions, 43. Uh, good point. I think that goes on the line of what we were saying also, yeah. Yeah, is that like permission to revert any revision from, but I, I don't even remember what revert actually does in reality. I haven't, used it for so long. Um, I, I think what that does is make a previous revision the current published revision. Yeah, I think uh, we get yes, rid of okay. the, the current one. So it's close to deleting a uh, revision. I'm not sure if you get rid of that. I don't but know, I, I think. I think that one I'm isn't sure an unrecoverable. You, you read on. Okay, I'm not really sure. I, I think for the content editor role, as I said, the, the, the guiding line here should be basically content editor shouldn't be able to do something that is unrecoverable. Like reverting a revision, that seems like something that a content editor should be able to do that's not an unrecoverable action because that's just creating, like you're just sending something back to a previous revision and the revision that was there is still exists in the revision log in the revision tree. Like you could revert back to what you just reverted kind of thing. Um, personally, I'm, I'd be okay with that one. We can always do a follow-up with this, I mean, if we see that this can be problematic, we can always, that could be a really simple part, I guess. And we could take shed on another issue. Yeah, yes, if, if we can finally get this in in the next <laughs> few weeks, it will still be very early in the 9.3 development cycle. So we, we can make changes after people see the actual changes. There's just one that could even get into 9.2. I'm just wondering if um, we're past that point. 
because it's all just configuration, isn't it? There's no actual code here. Um, in theory, it could get into 9.2, but I, I don't think it will. Uh, we, we already have an alpha release of 9.2, right? Yeah. yeah, I think, yeah. And what about, the, give... what about the editorial um, transitions, the, the content moderation permissions? Uh, what do you mean? How are they or what do we have to do? Can, can we have a, a look at them? So yes. should we get rid of the publishing? I have, I'm not sure about that. Um, I don't, do you think this could be problematic to give the publish? I thought we actually... Yeah, we were saying that we shouldn't allow uh, publish and unpublish. And this patch, it's actually use editorial trans transition publish. So should we um, move it to the content manager also? Is anybody speaking and I'm not hearing anybody or? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> um, I'm thinking perhaps both um, the publish and also the archived published. I think both of those move something to the published state. Um, those both seem like content manager permissions to me. Agreed. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm beginning okay. to think that no one has taken a close look at this list since the related issue was added for yeah. the content manager role. I think we need. So I'm kind of struggling with those ones a little bit because, on one hand, you might want like you might, as an editor, publishing something is not as drastic as deleting. So I'm, I'm kind of split on those ones. I don't really have a strong feeling one way or the other. I guess the, the thing to really bear in mind with this is that we're you know, we're not making changes across existing sites. We're just providing things in the standard profile that people are inevitably going to change and adapt for their own use cases. So I think when it comes to what is content editor, what is content manager rules, as long as it doesn't, it kind of, it almost doesn't matter what exact permissions we give to those rules, as long as they make sense within the, the like guidelines if you like, that we define for what we think those rules should represent. I guess what I'm saying is like, if we have, if we define like, this is a content editor persona and this is a content manager persona, like this is the kind of job they do. 
then it becomes really clear what permissions they need. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's kind of where my thinking is at. I'm just realizing that we actually had this discussion and we agreed on deleting all this, removing all this. Oh no, sorry. We said that we could keep it for now and we would move it uh, into the content manager once we add the content manager. And that's the agreement that we got. We arrived two months ago. Meaning, because right now there's going to be only the content editor and there's not going to be the content manager yet. And that's why we kept the the permissions on the on the patch because this last patch doesn't remove them it just gets them so i guess we should remove them or at least the agreement that we got last time or like one of the last times that we spoke about that it's just we will keep them for now on the content editor and we will remove them later on and add them to the content manager but here is that what you are saying about uh, we are not making changes to current installations, meaning if we do that change later on, are we going to do these changes? I guess not because we are not update, updating existing sites, but maybe if someone is relying on that, I'm not sure how it would affect them. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't really, uh... If, if someone was unlocked, like, I don't know if unlock is the right word, but if someone was unlucky enough to install Drupal at an in, in arbitrary point in time where the content rule, content editor rule existed, but not the content manager rule, then they would never, then um, unless like they reset their site, they would never get that content manager rule. So like, again, I'm, I'm kind of a bit like one way or the other, I think, to be honest, like, let's just get this issue over the line. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah. you know like let's just okay take out the permissions that we're just, just take the permissions out that we we know we're going to go into the content manager role let's just get the editor role done and then we'll put those in the content manager role and kind of you know yeah i i agree let's let's go with the plan that that you you had in comment 31 okay and i i guess the idea is that someone should have those permissions. And as of this issue, that someone will be the content editor role. And, and we have a plan to um, change that when, when we do the content manager role. Okay, cool, then I'm, I'm gonna update the, the comment and uh, change it back to the best. And um, okay, I think that's all. I've just made a screenshot of the people in the meeting today. So I will try to mention you on the comment, but not sure if I will have the Drupal or user name for everybody. Um, no, don't, don't, don't worry about that. I, I will list everyone on the um, the issue for today's usability meeting, and, and okay, I'll, I'll move from there to this issue. That's perfect. Okay, then I think we're done. Finally, let's see if this call, this time it's the last one or not. Let's hope so. And and, and also make sure um, that the content manager issue is is up to date, and it's noted on there that we should be removing some issues from content yes. editor. Yeah, I think I, I did it. So after comment 31, I went there and I think I'm not 100% sure, but I think I did it that. Okay. Um... I, guess, I guess the nice thing is that if this goes into 9.3 and we get it in really early, there's plenty of time to get the content manager rolling <laughs> in theory. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, in but theory, you, we you, should have both in by <laughs> nine dot three release. 
<laughs> yeah, but this is Drupal. You know how is your Q score? <laughs> oh, I'm I'm in in theory like big in theory yeah. like bold text big <laughs> font size seventy two in theory italic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks all. And I'm not sure if anybody has anything else today. Okay. Um, if if no one has any other issues, um, I'd love to talk over a layout builder issue. Oh, please go ahead. Can can you share your screen? Um, sure. Let me. For the recording, can you read out the issue number? <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. Um, yes, uh, it is issue 2924058. Uh, and this is the issue for using the layout folder to control uh, all of the layout regions on the site uh, instead of just the main content area. Um, so, uh, we have some mockups for how this could work. Um, and uh, so the idea is um, we would have a possible layout mode uh, or edit mode. And uh, this would move into the toolbar. And a user could enable that mode and then would see um, different regions, depending on whether it's global or the main content area. So this is an example um, that has a layout builder content and also has the global regions. Uh, if layout builder wasn't enabled for the content, then you would only see the yellow global regions. You wouldn't see the blue um, main content region. Uh, and then when you click into uh, the main content region, you would get um, this area to edit and that goes through some of how that would work. But if you clicked into the global header region, you would first get a pop-up saying, this is a global region. Um, any layout changes here will be reflected throughout the site. And after you've uh, seen that before, it won't appear again uh, on a per user basis. At least that's the idea. Um, and then, once you've clicked through, you could edit the layout uh, for that region and add sections and add blocks. Um, so that's the idea that we came up with now, um, but we could really use some uh, other people's input. So, so, so I guess the question is that that warning. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that is one outstanding question is, uh, is this an effective way to manage expectations around global regions versus uh, content region? So I guess on a similar thought, like, I feel like there's a big risk here that we, um, I'm going to choose my words carefully, but like, so first of all, I think this is a really good idea. Like, I think this is a great idea to do this, but I think how we implement it is really important to make sure we're not causing confusion between, as we see here, like what is global, what is specific, 
to an entity type what is specific to that exact that exact piece of content that happens to be put on the screen. I remember there was a lot of discussions around that for the first main sort of development of Layout Builder where we were looking at, you know, how do you distinguish between right now I am editing the layout for this particular like entity type or like node like content type versus I'm editing the layer for this specific piece of content. And so here we're looking at the same, but global site, you know, Chrome versus specific piece of content or like for a content type. I guess the thing, first thing that comes to mind is is the, the the layout the layout builder generated region and for the content in the middle of the screen there. So you can edit that, but then when you edit that, what are you editing? Are you editing that specific piece of content, like that specific node, or are you editing that content, the layout for that content type? Or is this just like an all-in-one layout builder interface for everything? Um, so that would still have the same markers that we have um, where it has the info block stating if you're editing for that specific piece of content or if you're editing globally. Um, so that's it's not in this mock-up but it's what we have right now um, and it would still be there. Okay. So there would still be the layout tab that you would click on and then Oh, um, no, but the little info block that we normally have, um, and yeah, it's sorry that it's not in this mock up, but um, we normally have a little info block right here above the title text yeah. that would show an icon um, that specifies whether it's global or whether it's um, just that individual piece of content. Although, um, I'm pretty sure that if you ever hit this page, it would always be that specific piece of content because the global one, um, I think that you would hit a different way. Yeah, so I guess the, the thing I'm trying to figure out is if I'm, if I say, okay, I want to go edit the global, like I want to edit the blocks on the header. So yeah. right now I'm going to go to the block UI mm -hmm. and I'd, I'd add a block or move a block around. And that's okay. And I know I'm in that UI, like it's very clear I am editing this across the site right now. So with this, we would want to be make sure that we're not we're we're keeping that like consistent consistency. Is that the right? Not consistency, but the, the that sort of separation of concerns, so to speak. Like it's we need to be really clear to the user that you you are either editing the global site right now or you're editing something more specific um so i guess you would navigate for editing like the header you would navigate through from some part of the global navigation like through structure or, um well no um, so that's that's actually the the question um here the idea was you would have this toolbar um, and you could go into layout mode and you would, um, so you, when you navigated into layout mode, you would see this page essentially. Um, and that page, that's what would pop up the moment you hit layout mode in the toolbar. Um, and then you would have different types of regions. So um, you would have, if you clicked into the header region here, that's, you would have to click in and then to that yellow part. And then this is what would pop up. So it would give that warning that header is a global region. Um, and yeah, the, the question is, is that clear? Um, does that clearly convey the changes that you're making are global and they're site-wide. So I have two requests. Um, so the first one is that, that this um, modal window should have two different buttons to close it. One, one of which um, says, um, remind me next time. And the other of which says, 
um, never show this again, or we, 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 we can worry about the exact wording later, but I, I want those two options. Um, the second request is that we have some less obvious but more persistent indication of whether we're editing global or, or not. And one possibility is that I, I see at the very top left of the screenshot, layout module has a, a blue background. Um, maybe we could color code that to whether we're editing global or not. And just as the page has different highlight colors for the global regions and, and the content region. Um, if the, the background of, of the, the layout mode text could match that, um, that would be a good visual persistent indication of whether we're working on global or, or content regions. Um, we'd also want to make sure that, that there, there's some similar indication for um, non-visual users. If you're trying to reply, then you're still muted. I'm sorry, I was, I was sorting out a toddler. Um, uh, I missed a little bit of that, sorry. So, so the first part was that I wanted two buttons to close the, the warning, um, what, one of which would mean close this and don't show it again, the other of which would say close this, but do show it next time. And, and the second request is that we have some sort of persistent indicator of whether we're working on the content region or a global region. Okay, great. I, I did get this. Um, yeah, I think both of those make sense. Sometimes you just have to shout over the toddler. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would love to hear um, if anyone does have any um, any other general thoughts about how this is working. To uh, you know, if if there's anything else um, that is confusing about this, I think um, for me the the thing I'm sort of <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap I'm still trying to wrap my head around this because it's such a paradigm shift from. As long as I've worked in Drupal, I've always the, the block, the way you edit blocks and site UI has kind of been the same. So it's um it's a bit of a <laughs> I don't know. Um it's taken me a minute to 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 wrap my head around this. Um but uh um okay, so so to go back to something I said earlier, we essentially would have three different you you okay so you can edit a layout and then three different contexts there's the context of as we're looking at here the global global layout like the whole site something like that and then you've got the specific you've got at least like you've got the specific um the layout for the specific content type or like view display or something like that. And then you've got editing the layout for that particular piece of content or, you know, entity. Um, and I guess it's, how do we then, because right now, if you go to edit the layout for a particular content, piece of content, you go to the layout tab on that piece of content. If you go to edit the layout for a particular like content type, you go into the managed display of that content type. And that, by taking those different navigational paths, that really sets the expectations of what you're doing here. So I guess part of what you're asking and part of what I'm trying to 
understand as well is, is how do we distinguish between those things? Because if there's always just going to, if there, if what we're saying is we have a button on the toolbar and it's like the layout button and you click it and you go into this layout editing experience, how do we then distinguish between the user wants to edit this block in this particular um, node versus the user wants to edit this block for all of the nodes of this particular content type? And I, I don't have any, like, I don't have the answer to that right now, but that's definitely something that needs to be really clear as well. Yeah, so I think um, we would still have the, the info text that shows if you're editing specific content on, so I'm gonna go to, um, so it would be on um, this page essentially, and it would be above the title and it would show um, you are editing this specific piece of content and we would have that same link that's in there that says, um, if you'd like to edit content for all, uh, all content of this type, click here and you could click that link to toggle and, um, and then it has an icon change as well. So it goes from the global um, icon to uh, the individual icon. Uh, so both of those would allow you to toggle back and forth between editing the specific piece of content or editing it for all of that type. Um, but it, yes, it's definitely true that uh, that this is kind of an easier way to get into everything. So it might be less obvious. Um, you haven't had to go through as much of a procedure to get into where you're editing. Um, so I, yeah, I think we need to make it very clear. Um, through yeah. this. I, I guess another, another layer level of context is, or another, another layer of editing, I suppose, is if, and I don't remember if this issue ever got committed, but the idea that we could have a uh, different layers per view mode and not just one for all view modes. So there's that also, I guess there's a fourth element there of editing layout if that, end, if that issue ends up getting committed. That doesn't sound familiar, so um, e either it hasn't been committed yet or, or I missed it. Yeah, it might just, it, I think it might still be an issue um, that uh, didn't, I don't, I don't think that's been committed then. It was around about the same time that we looked like, uh, that we got um, the ability to edit layouts for particular items. It was, I think it might have been a follow-up to that one. Okay. Um, well, thanks everyone. This was really helpful. Um, so I'm really glad we could do it. Okay. So Emily, will you update that issue and Christina, you'll update the content editor issue. Um, I will link to both of them from the issue for the usability meeting. And um, I guess we can close 10 minutes early. Thank you all for coming and um, we'll do it again next week. Thank you. Uh, thanks. thanks. Bye.